Welcome to the Teaching Tax Flow Podcast, where the goal is to empower and educate you to legally and ethically minimize taxes paid over your lifetime. Hey everybody, good day and welcome to episode 48. Today we're going to look at Q4, that's the fourth quarter game time, put your game face on. We're going to talk tax planning and strategy and why it is more important now than ever. But before we jump into that, let's take a moment, thank our sponsor. Are you leaving money on the table? Are you an accredited investor seeking new and exciting investment opportunities? Look no further than Integrated Investment Group, your trusted partner in financial success. At IIG, the focus is on delivering exclusive investment options tailored to your unique needs and goals. Contact them today and let their expert team guide you toward your financial aspirations. Wondering if you qualify as an accredited investor? Visit teachingtaxflow.com backslash IIG to find out and take the first step towards a brighter financial future. Integrated Investment Group, your path to financial success begins here. Securities offered through Cabin Securities. Member FINRA SIPC. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the one, the only Teaching Tax Flow, the podcast. I am John Trapalski from the TTF team here, as always, joined by my, was it PIC, my partner in crime, the brains behind TTF, the educator, the podcaster, the CPA, the everything else we can think of, Chris Picuro. How are we, my man? Well, gosh, I feel like I need a mic drop. Thank you. I don't know about being the brains behind this. Um, it might have been a vision, but we have a lot of brains behind this, including yours. And it's great to be back. We are excited to talk about tax planning and strategy. We enter the fourth quarter of the year, the most important quarter of the year in many ways. I don't know if I agree with that, but what I will say is because we do believe tax, your tax return is a verb, not a noun here at Teaching Tax Flow. This is the most critical time for implementation of tax planning and strategy. And uh, I'm excited to talk about that. Um, and many of you might be listening saying, wait a second, it's September. Does this person, he might be good with numbers, but not really good with the calendar. Well, for federal tax purposes, and most states comply, the fourth quarter actually is comprised of September, October, November, and December. The third quarter federal estimated tax payments do September 15th and incorporates June, July, and August. I know it's confusing. But the last four months of the year are the fourth quarter. So that's why we are going to say, what should we be thinking about right now? We did a mid-year update, but now we're getting closer and closer to the finish line. And Chris, too, when you look at Q4, so in regards, I mean, obviously, to some, they like you just mentioned, they might look at it and say, oh, well, that's not true. You know, it's broken down and evenly into four quarters. But I think the, the importance of everything we're going to talk about here and really the importance of everything that teaching tax flow as a whole really encompasses and is built on really is strategy and planning, right? So kind of twofold. If somebody's listening to this, this show specifically and they say, wow, I haven't done any anything. I think I got an extension because that's what my preparer did. Um, oh, ca- oh, crap, that's coming up here soon. I got to knock that out. Or, oh my gosh, it's the end of the year. The holidays are coming up. There's a lot of stressors in Q4, right? It's like, I'm going to make a sports reference. As you know, I know nothing about football, but the end of Q4 technically could be great. It could be a disaster. It's all about the situation you're in going into it. So that being said, Chris, kind of walk us through a few things. And again, you've been doing this for a long time. So 20 plus years running a private practice, clients all over the world. What are some things that maybe people don't really plan for going into Q4, but also things that can be accomplished now that really set them up for success going into Q1 of the following year. Correct. So first thing to remember, another of our three laws of teaching tax flow is is that tax agencies are your involuntary business partner. If you do no planning, the tax agencies, let's say for federal tax purposes, the IRS, will pick your tax for you. So being reactive not good. Being proactive, good. What should you do if you're sitting here and you have not done any type of tax planning for 2023? Let's start off with step one. 
we have a process in teaching tax flow that we're going to walk you through. And let's just talk about where you're at if you've done nothing. If your tax, you mentioned the extension. If your 2022 tax return is on extension, let's get that wrapped up over the next couple to three weeks. You don't want to wait till the very, very end. Uh, we are committed to getting the best result possible, and so should you. And we love tax extensions here. That being said, we're getting into the scary zone, right? We're getting into that point of, okay, well, what if, what if, what if there's some information missing? What if there's some information that's going to take time to, to grab? So all of your documents should be s- submitted to your tax professional by now. And the ball's in their court. For most of the people listening, they've already filed their 2022 return. So step one is make sure 2022 has a bow put on it. At least the ball's out of your court as the taxpayer. Step, so that's the pre-step. Now let's talk about tax planning and strategy. Next, you have to get your year-to-date numbers. Without good numbers, you have nothing. I always talk to our clients about this. I need chocolate chips to make chocolate chip cookies. Hey, Chris, too, if I can interrupt for one second, I I feel like I've heard this for well over a decade, you saying the hardest part of your job is not preparing returns, it's not the planning, it's not the strategy, actually it is information collection. So when you talked about putting the ball in somebody else's court, that gives, and earlier the better, right? That gives the opportunity for whoever is is doing y'all's tax prep to say, oh, well, we are missing something here, or oh, this you know, this needs to be changed, this needs to be updated instead of the night before the deadlines and you're really up, you know what, creek, right? You know what? I had this thought, uh, this analogy I thought of last week. I had the opportunity to do some really high-level training in Chicago and I went to the airport. I left plenty early, no traffic, got through security in 15 minutes in Nashville here, which is very rare. I learned to fly on Tuesday evening, which is the <laughs> well, and, you, and you avoid all the bachelorette parties in and out of town. So that's yeah, all that. Exactly. You're you're in good shape. And um and then guess what? I got on the airplane. We were ready to leave. Flight got delayed by an hour because the staff they were allegedly understaffed in Chicago. They let us get out of the plane, and I went and got a little more work done. But my point is. Think about you. Tr- when anyone listening, if you travel via via airplane or car, when you're scrambling, that's the equivalent of driving somewhere and you're running late. You're not enjoying the trip at all. You're stressed. You're looking at that little GPS thinking that you could beat it. <laughs> Arrival is this. And that's not an enjoyable experience. Versus, I don't have the stress. So I'm getting to the airport a little early. I can kick back, I could get a coffee, I could get a drink, I can return some emails, I can read. Hey, I don't mind a little people watching. I'm not stressed about finding parking. Your stress level is not elevated. But the funny thing is, the reason I threw in the flight delay is you could do all that and the IRS still delay your refund or or something happen. Um, so with tax planning, it's the same way. Don't wait till the end of the year to start doing tax planning. So think about where you're at tax-wise right now. Now, for those that are on a salary, it might be similar to your 2022. Then the first step, the first step comes in, which is diagnose your current situation using your marginal tax rate. Step one out of the four of our secret sauce our proprietary tax planning and strategy process. So diagnose your current situation using your marginal tax rate. Your marginal tax rate, number one key performance indicator for any tax planning. Marginal tax rate is different than your tax bracket. And um, you have to determine, hey, and what is my marginal tax rate here in 2023? It could be correlated or not correlated to 2022. Once you know that, then you know what strategies you should be thinking about. Diagnose, prescribe, step two, prescribe different strategies. Explore what you should be doing for the 2023 tax year, that's appropriate for your situation. You might have six, seven strategies that you're considering. You might only implement two or three, and that's okay. Hmm. You are looking for the strategy that makes the most sense for you. Mm-hmm. So unless you identify what you're looking for, 
your everything is going to seem, oh, that sounds good. That you're gonna you're gonna be a squirrel. You know, like that strategy sounds good. This strategy sounds good. No. Diagnose step one, prescribe different strategies, step two. And then step three, what we call in the teaching tax flow system is our IQ test. It says for identify a strat- strategy, quantify results. But to make that simple, the IQ test is really a it's a four part test that determines if this strategy is appropriate for you based on a variety of different factors. And those factors are your liquidity. Like everyone would love to de- put money into certain investments or retirement plans. But guess what? Last time I checked, you have to have the money to do it, right? <laughs> you yeah. know, one of those money trees don't exist. The things that just like, you know, grow $100 bills and you pull them off. No, it doesn't exist and, and it has to be suitable, right? So for some of the strategies, you have to be an accredited investor. For some, you do not have to be. You have to be comfortable with it. So it has to meet your horizon, time horizon, your um, your risk tolerance. And, and, and we always say, don't let the tax tail wag the dog. And it has to make tax sense. So if the strategy is, I've got $1,000 to my name, I'm going to donate it to a charity to save $0.20, cent, $200, even though that's a benevolent thought, that doesn't make much tax sense. We and just, Chris, you mentioned too, I mean, diving into all those, you know, just to even break it down more, you know, back to your back to your comment, and we always talk about this, you know, the IRS being that involuntary business partner. It's it's so important that there's any strategy and any planning involved. Like you had mentioned, you might have seven different options, right? You don't have to have all these options, or I mean, I shouldn't say all these options, all these opportunities, and you're sitting there pulling your hair out saying, no, I need to do them all. I need to do them all. If I don't do this one, everything's going to fall apart. Just knowing that they exist. And then, as you mentioned, say that number seven, you're lucky number seven. Say you have seven opportunities to take advantage of. They don't all necessarily go away at the end of the year, which is a is another topic there. I know we've touched on in the past, but then also just knowing what's there for years to come, which then... I mean, even diving into it deeper, which now we start to get into, um, what do you call like a, another dimension, right? When you, when you mm-hmm. think about it, knowing that an opportunity exists, knowing that you can plan for an opportunity that exists really does open up a bunch of doors. So what I mean by that is it's almost motivating knowing, say, hey, you know what? A great, uh, a, a great opportunity for me might be to look at investment properties. Oh, crap. I don't have the liquidity to do it right now, but I want to get to that point. And then there's another opportunity. So really, it's like planning for growth based off of strategy, I think would be a a decent way to say it, correct? Absolutely. The IQ test is important because you have to determine what's appropriate for your situation. I just recently met with someone in uh, one of the the members of the teaching tax school community, had us come in, do a personalized tax plan for him and his spouse. One of the items that we talked about was that they own 50%. Of a, of a multi-member LLC, that LLC owns some properties. Uh, all of the people in the LLC are family members, but not all of them have the same age, risk tolerance, uh, income. And that LLC is a, considering selling a piece of property at a gain of, of somewhere between a, a half a million dollars and a million dollars. So although a, maybe a 1031 exchange might make sense for two of the four members of the LLC, for the other two, it doesn't make sense. So we walked through that IQ test, you know, what should we do and what strategies can work with others? So it's not a, it's not a, uh, oh, either, or it's a, and I would do the strategy and that strategy or what are my options? Um, they, you know, and we identify, actually we identified five different paths for this, this taxpayer. And which leads us to our fourth step of the tax planning strategy uh, processes implementation. Many of these tax strategies you can implement on your own. Let me give you an example. Make a health savings account contribution. You don't need much help with that. Just go up to the bank or log in, create an HSA account, make a contribution. But the more advanced a tax strategy is, the more implementation um, pieces there are. And we might have to involve uh, people within your within your what we call our your board of directors, and those implementation partners. It's it's worth every conversation with those, right? Just based off of expertise and and really making sure you do it right and not completely muddy the waters up. 
Absolutely. We we were working. I'll give you another real quick example. I was working with another person in the teaching tax flow community, came in for a personalized tax um, plan. That person was purchasing a property from a mature aged couple and for over a million dollars. Uh, and, and they were looking at the financing. They're looking at a bunch of things. And I said, well, does the selling, do the people selling, do the, are they just, do they want the money or do they just want no headache and like, well, they really don't need the money. I said, have you considered offering maybe more money to purchase the property, but asking them to sell or finance at a lower rate than you're going to get at the bank? Something reasonable. It puts just as much money in their pocket in many ways, yet it's more tax, it's more tax favorable because it's more of a capital gain than in, and, and it also eases you into purchasing the property cash flow wise because the property <laughs> work. But those are the, so if who's an implementation partner in that, it's actually his realtor because the realtor has to go back to the seller and talk through it. Now they might not go for it, but implementation partner doesn't always, it's anyone on your board of directors. So it doesn't always mean a, a financial advisor or an insurance professional or an accountant. Mm -hmm. It could be anyone. And that's the thing to consider. You want, you know, you want to make sure that you have those relationships in place. Final thing that someone needs to be considering right now, we talk about that implementation. There's a myth out there, and we did a series uh, at the end of 2022 when we went through all of our four color-coded diagnoses, and you pestered me and asked me, which one's my favorite year-end strategy? And I said, I'm going to tell you my favorite year-end strategy for each of these colors, but diagnoses, but that doesn't mean it's my favorite strategy. Mm -hmm. Timeline is just as important as, as as the strategy sometimes. So, for instance, some of the strategies you can you can implement in 2024, but still count for 2023. So, if you're thinking about your fourth quarter right now, you need to figure out: okay, what are the you know where am I at right now? What's my diagnosis? What potential strategies exist? Does it make sense financially for me? And when I go to implement. What do I have to get done today versus, you know, we've got clients, John, as you know, uh, in the teaching tax flow community that are finishing their implementation up for 2022. Sometimes it's a, a sub contribution. Sometimes it's a, um, uh, a cost segregation study. There are several things that might count to still for 2022. Right. And some of them are quick to implement is basically an HSA, like you had mentioned. Other ones take significant time and there's no you know, basically just pulling the lever and it's done, you know, and, and you mentioned too, I mean, again, back to, you know, board of directors, I think, I think this is a, a the absolute best podcast episode that we've done that I would almost put that challenge out if nobody's done it before is to really look at, I mean, obviously get your information over to your tax preparer. If you haven't done that yet, let's, let's not even that consider a challenge. That's a, that's a task, but mm -hmm. almost considering this as a challenge is saying, you know, what does my board of directors look like? I know we did a did a whole episode on that and you hit it a fantastic point just moments ago too. You said everybody's board is different. Um case in point. I mean if you're um if if you're selling a if you're selling technology, you really don't need a, you know, an architect on your board of directors necessarily. You know what I mean? So it's everybody's looks different. I mean, obviously you have your tax pros, your attorney, your your realtor possibly always kind of at hand, but I would put that challenge out if you haven't done that yet. Look at your board, start to put it together. And then even if it's getting into to Q1 of next year and you have a couple open seats, you know, quote unquote open seats, you start to look to fill those. And I know a, a good opportunity too is look at the people that are on your board for you, but then maybe reach out to them and try to fill those other seats. You know, birds of the feather flock together. If, you, if you're like-minded and those are the people that you like having, that think the same, act the same as you, that's something. If you like people that think completely different than you, um, just for opposing opinions, you know, approach that to fill those seats. Um, but I'd put that out as a challenge. You agree with that, Chris? Think that'd be a good one? I, I agree with you. And, and to wrap it up here, because on top of that challenge, if you didn't like the results of your 2022 return, look at the return and figure out why. And this is the time to really think. Um, you know, I, I, in, in the final thing I want to say is one of the myths that we always talk about in many of our, our presentations is that you don't have to have a significant amount of income or a significant amount of assets to do tax planning and strategy. I would argue 
uh, taxpayers with with that are just getting started or don't have a ton of assets, don't have a tough a, a ton of income just yet. Tax planning is much more important to that person uh, because an extra thousand dollars in their pocket goes a long way, and that could be something as easy as I have daycare expenses. Should should I if my employer offers a a pre tax option to put money away towards daycare, should I put it there? Or should I just pay it out of pocket and take the credit on my personal tax return? Those are just little things that could save tons of families a significant amount of money. And so to, to put a bow on this, think right now. If you need to really trip your mind up, pretend that September 30th is December 31st. And you know on October 1st, you're going to see the Halloween stuff. And then on November 1st, you're going to see all the Christmas stuff in the stores. But pretend September 30th is the end of the year. What would you do? That's the... And other than that, you know, obviously reach out to us uh, with any questions and we'll drop happy to help. And we'll drop a couple of the, uh, a couple of our courses as well that's available on our website, which is completely free for the basic membership. Um, we'll put those links in the show notes and, and check those out and really just go through those at your leisure. Usually it's 10, 15 minutes to get through that whole course and then send over any of those questions. So. I appreciate everybody joining us here as always. Q4, Q4, Q4. Plan, strategize, execute. Get ready for Q1. So until then, we'll see everybody next time. Hey everyone, thanks for hanging in there with us. John here still from the Teaching Tax Flow team. Great episode we just powered through here with Chris looking at Q4 and really the importance of tax planning and strategy, not only for the now, but for the later, looking into next year. So take some of the notes that you got from this episode, some of those topics, store them in your brain, and get ready to move forward. So take that challenge, though. Look at your board of directors. Build that out if you haven't yet. But really, if you haven't yet, get your information to your tax pr preparer. Otherwise, you're really in trouble. So until next time. The content of this podcast does not constitute an offer of securities. Offerings can only be made through an offering memorandum, and you should carefully examine the risk factors and other information contained in the memorandum. The content provided is for educational purposes only. We encourage you to seek personalized investment advice from your financial professional. For all tax and legal advice, please consult your CPA or attorney. Investment advisory services are offered through Cabin Advisors, a registered investment advisor. Securities are offered through Cabin Securities, a registered broker-dealer.